Okay. So today, um, what will be not a whole lot of notes. There's like five slides, I think, but they're really important because it contradicts everything that we've learned in the last three weeks. <laughs> Yeah. So you know how we talk about like, you know, if we cross the mom with brown hair and the dad with blonde hair, maybe you get like a heterozygous, kind of square. Um, but there are just some traits that don't fit so cleanly into a punnet square, no matter how big we make them. They just don't fit neatly because they really don't follow the Mendelian trait, you know, from Gregor Mendel about dominant recessive, there is a whole lot of let mix there. Um, and so we call these non-Mendelian traits or complex patterns of heredity. And we're gonna talk about six different ones. Okay, the first one is incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance. Now, before you even write it down, listen to me with your eyes. Listen to me with your eyes. If you turn in like an incomplete assignment, what does that look like? Incomplete. An F, <laughs> it's incomplete. But what, is it like all the way done, halfway done? It's like halfway done, like it's lazy, kind of like meh. 50% done. Okay, that's the same thing as incomplete dominance. It's not completely dominant. It's 50-ish percent, we'll say. It's incomplete, it's in the middle. So um, a really example, a really good example is if uh, we take the red and the white snapdragons again away from the beginning, and I cross them, I get pink snapdragons. So it's like mixing paint colors. Neither of the traits are fully expressed. We don't have a fully red, we don't have a fully white. Okay, if this is a Punnett square, we would get like heterozygous, the dominant trait would probably be red. That just isn't how they work. An incomplete dominance. There are some traits in certain living things that just don't fit in a Punnett square. And this one where we're getting a mix is going to be called incomplete dominance. Another example is hair texture. So how many of you have like thin straight hair? You don't do anything to it, it just is straight. Wait. Okay, how many of you have curly hair, like curly curly? Yep. Then how many of you are in the middle somewhere? Like it's wavy. Okay, so it's the same thing, both curly and straight hair are dominant. But when we put them together, so say we have a mom and a dad, we get a mix, which is going to be wavy. It's not curly, but it's not thin straight either. You get kind of a wave. And some people are luckier than others and they have nice waves. And some people have not nice waves. Um, we can also talk about different types of animals. If you take like a black mouse and cross it with a white mouse, you get a gray mouse. Do you see how we're looking at something that is in the middle? It's a mix. Kind of incomplete dominance, meaning neither one of them is technically dominant over the other. You just get a mix. A hodgepodge, if you say. Okay, so 
there in pink, and I put kind of in my own words, incomplete dominance, if you're keeping like a, a running section kind of in your margins or somewhere, just a couple of keywords to remember because we're gonna do some more with this for the rest of the week. We're gonna be working on these things. Um, the incomplete dominance is a mix. I think of like mixing paint. We can take blue, we can take green. Yellow, blue, and green. Where neither trait is fully expressed. And then it is easily confused with this, which is co dominance. Okay, listen to me with your eyes really quick. What would you call, how do you describe the relationship between like me and Miss King, me and Mrs. Folly, Mrs. Blake, me and Mrs. Lentz, me and Mr. Spicer? What are we to each other? Co okay, we're teachers, we're friends, we're co workers. What does that mean? We work together. Okay, so the same thing in co-dominance. They are dominant together. Okay, now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna flip back real quick. Incomplete dominance is a mix. Neither is dominant. Co-dominant, we're dominant together. We're at the same level, we're dominant together. Both traits are equally expressed. Both traits. So, for example, if we take a red cow and we cross it with a white cow, we get a spotted cow. Okay, because we have some red, we have some white. They did not mix to make like a tan color. That would be incomplete dominance. In co-dominance, they're going to work together, and so we have half and half, hypothetically. Yeah. 
white dog. Good. We said dog. We can do it by the white dog. Or no. I don't know what kind of dog. That's all right. It's dog. Guys, are you listening? Listen. We have like different uh, approaches. Good. Oh, that's how it goes back. You know, like Ooh. Why? 
Just knowing what you know about body temperature, why? Sit. Sit. Uh, Sit. Uh, environmentally injured. What? <laughs> yes. Hey, help him out. Uh, if it's like, I feel like that like skin will be like, the harder parts will be You just broke your pencil and like low-key kept talking out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the delicate parts would be like some hotter temperatures. Maybe. Opposite. Oh, uh, it'd be colder temperatures. Right, so think about like in the winter time, hold on, Tiana. What's the first thing that gets cold? Like uh, on us? Why don't we get cold on Your feet, your hands, your face, your ears, your nose. All of those things get cold first, and that's why they turn like bright pink or sometimes unfortunately red or blue. The same. You never had it like turn like a little bit of blue? Yeah. I feel smooth. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm getting Right, Tiana, question. Cows, cows change for the weather, like like their humps can be bigger in hot, hot weather. Okay, and their skin is different. Cody should know this. Cody's a genius. Right, Cody. The hotter the weather for a cow, it'll hit a bigger hump, like the humps on cows in like India or is that on? On the back. I know what he's talking about. I learned it. I learned it. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, it's not the humps. Get a big on the back of your neck. Yeah. Okay. And their skin like is pretty cool. It's not a camel. It's a bull. Yeah, that's. We're talking about bulls, not cows. Okay. Cows are bulls. Yeah, bulls. Bulls. There you go. Oh, you said bulls. Oh. Yeah, bulls. Humps. Like if a rabbit is like white and it like has like a different room temperature for the blue rabbit, would they all be different? Yeah. That is. What I is want your, a rabbit now. Wait, what if it's a black rabbit? No, 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 no. Like, what if it's a yeah, yeah, rabbit or a black? Can you get a different room temperature? Well, if they're white, you. No, it has to be this kind of rabbit. Oh, we've had rabbits. Why are their eyes red? Because they're alive. Yeah. Do they eat physics? I don't know how they want to Okay, so another funny one. Do you guys know what a Siamese cat is? Yes. yes. Are these those Mickey cats? Is there anybody? No, they're not. Why does everybody think they're the hairless cat? They are. They're they are. No, they're not. No, they're not. What the heck? What? Nate, go to my computer and type Siamese cat in the search bar. That's what you guys know, right? Oh, wait. Wait, hold on. I can click it. It's right there. From earlier. Yeah, I can see. This is a Siamese cat. Yeah, why did everyone think it was a Siamese cat? Because, hey, so when everybody in third period has a hairless cat. Dude, that thing is so ugly. That thing is cute. No, no, no. Yeah, Lady in the Tramp, those Siamese cats are beautiful. Oh, yeah. these kind of guys. 
these cats are bred specifically for shows. Like this was somebody's show cat. It's very, very expensive. Like, are you sure it doesn't belong to anybody? We're like, we weren't really ask, but no, because he, he, was, he wasn't fixed. And she was like, I bet this is somebody's show cat. No way. So we leave, ask around. Nobody's cat that we know of, so we kept it. And one trait with Siamese cats is they are very possessive over like a person. Like they have a person, they pick their person, and that is their person. And I mean, it got along with both me and my husband, like there wasn't anything weird. But when Mia came, like our toddler now, um, he would attack people that were holding her. I mean like full on, like people left our house bloody. We had to pin the cat up if people came over to see the baby. Super weird. And we didn't know that at the time. And he would like crawl in her crib and would hiss at us like in the middle of the night, like if I got up to feed her, it would like sit almost on top of her in the crib and like hiss at us and like bat at us. It was not good. So we didn't have to get rid of him. But that's my story about Siamese cats and how I somehow picked up a stray that was worth a lot of freaking money. Wait, why didn't you sell him? Um, because we fixed him and he wasn't worth anything. Oh. And I didn't want him to like sell him and like, I don't know, have somebody drag him to shows and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, so more external factors. Um, hydrangeas, do you guys know what these are or know anybody that has them? They're real pretty, they grow in like a bush kind of shape and the flowers are like that big, they're huge. Hydrangeas are the same way. They grow different colors, white, pink, or that bluey purple color based on the soil acidity. So something completely external to the plant, just the, the stuff that it's growing in, Changes or influences the characteristic that's expressed. Pink, blue, or white. Uh, if you drive down the, the road today, so none of you drive, right? Pedestrian group? You drive, you drive, right? You don't drive? Okay, so the next time you're going somewhere, I want you to look down the rows of corn before they start getting taken off here soon. You can see what's called morning glories. They're, they're like weeds, and they have a vine, and they grow up the side of corn. They grow on beans, too. Uh, but they also grow in pink or blue, and it has to do with the soil acidity. So as a farmer, you can tell whether or not your soil is acidic or basic based on what color the morning glories are that are growing along the side of the, the corn. It's pretty cool. Totally unreliable, but definitely based on the soil acidity. Are they common? Like really common? Morning glories? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it says you're driving down the road, look on the rows of corn and it'll be on the outside. It'll look like a, a vine and have pink, or flowers like that big and it'll be pink or blue. Do you notice there was one thing down there called, like the thing that grow them off? You know, like a bunch of, what is it Yeah, cattails. Is that what they're called? They're like brown. Yeah. Yeah, like cattails. No. <laughs> Um, another one that has to do with external factors, um, this pot I understand looks the same size, but down here it, it is increasing in size, just trust me. Okay, so the same thing happens with plants. Have you ever heard of a plant getting root bound? Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. So basically the roots grow so big that they get in a big knot and then the plant eventually dies. Okay, they can only get so big in that pot before there's no room for the roots to grow anymore. So an external factor for a plant could be something like pot size. Because if you put you know, a tree in a tiny pot, eventually it's gonna get root bound and die. So you know, it only gets this big. But if you keep putting it in a bigger pot to eventually plant outside, it'll grow into a great big normal sized tree. That is an external factor that changes the genes and how they're expressed. How do we feel about external factors? Go ahead. What if you had a tree in a pot with different kernels in the ground? Then you planted it in the pot and then you put it in the ground. Usually nothing. Uh, Usually. Anything else, gene wise, for external factors? Okay, we also call these environmental factors, just an FYI if you see that somewhere. Okay, the next one are sex linked traits. Sex linked traits. These are traits that are carried on the X or the Y chromosome, or the sex chromosome. They are seen at a higher rate in the male population because they are recessive. And that has to do with um, males being XX and females, or I'm sorry, females being XX and males being XY. 
a lot of things are carried on the Y chromosome specifically. So there's um, a couple examples that I just wanted to briefly touch on today. The first one is hemophilia. Um, the activity you guys do tomorrow, you get to learn a little bit more about hemophilia, but it's basically a clotting disease where your blood doesn't clot. So for somebody with hemophilia who doesn't take their medicine regularly, a paper cut could be deadly. A bruise could be deadly because the blood doesn't clot, it just runs and runs and runs and runs. Um, the next one is colorblindness. Is there anybody here that's colorblind? Who? Really, is he? Okay, good, I have him next to you. So, you guys can all see that there's a number in this right here? Yeah. What do you all see? Oh, good. Read. Uh, uh, I have a question. So, like, the, the disease thing, can you just fall and get a bruise in your eye? If you have hemophilia, yeah. Oh. It's really, really scary. That's a DC. Uh, it's, it's what? It's in a thing I watch. It's a show. Okay. Um, the next one is albinism. We'll talk about albinism a little bit more later. And then male pattern baldness. So I'm going to throw Mr. Huber <laughs> under, the, under the bus here. He is like the poster man for male pattern baldness. And we call it male pattern baldness because women also go bald. That's not what I'm here to say. Like women's hair falls out too. But male pattern baldness is like that old man you is what I call it where like you have hair on the sides and in the back but nothing right here. You know what I'm talking I mean Mr. Huber is like the perfect example, Mr. Bryan is starting to go that way. It's getting very thin right here. Mr. Bone Miller is starting to get really big back, you know, really, really thin back in this way. It's male pattern baldness. So guys, because it's sex linked, you will look at your mother's father. This only works for guys. Your mother's father. If they have hair, you'll look hair the rest of your life. If they are bald, you will also be bald. Your mother's father, Reese, I'm sorry. Oh, so no. <laughs> rip, rip to your hair. I don't know. I can't either, so don't worry. All right, so, um, again, sex link traits, very, not very common, usually seen in a higher rate in males because they are recessive, they are carried on the X or the Y chromosome. Questions about sex link traits? All right. So then the last two, we're only going to talk about polygenic right here. So I want you to write this down first, and then we'll go to pleiotropy. So polygenic, when we break down the word polygenic, poly, like a polygon, means many, and then G-E-N, the root word, means gene. So it literally means, and I put it over here, many genes influence one characteristic. Many genes influence one characteristic. And so one example is hair color or skin color where we almost have like a scale, where there can be lots and lots of different, you have the darkest of dark skin up here and the whitest of white skin here, and you kind of have this range. And so what happens when you have polygenic traits is there are, we'll say, you know, like 10 genes, each parent can, can contribute if you're kind of here in the middle, the, like the threes. Dave is here. And then when, when you have you know, a crossing over occurring, like a mom and a dad. It's like these polygenic traits get put into like a grocery stack, and when your genes are being broke up, it's almost like how many can you grab? So if you are like Jamie and you couldn't grab very many of the skin color, skin tone traits, you have see-through skin. If you are, or I don't even think, I don't really have anybody who's like super, super tan. I guess Kiana, you tan, Kiana? You tan? Huh? You go tan. You go tanning. Yeah. No, okay, so she's got pretty tan skin. So when her mom and her dad put all their skin color traits in together, she grabs quite a bit more. Okay, it's like a sliding scale. Lots of genes influence one trait. Go. Wait, so if a mom has three and a dad has three, then your child would have a six? It could if they got all of them, and, and then they would be dark, darker. Or the same way, if mom and dad gave three each, they could get one and be totally, I mean, light skin. It just depends. Um, eye color is the same way. As much as I would like to believe that I could tell you that it all, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. 
It's the same kind of thing. There's a scale or a sliding scale. Um, I also like to tell the story of the Craiglows. Okay, do you guys know the Craiglows? Like yeah. Lowe's? Okay, so you have what's his what's dad's name? What's his name? Uh, uh, Kyle. Kyle. You're right. So we have Kyle, who is really, 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 really tall, and then Sam, his mom, and she's not short, but she's not tall either. And then you have the four kids: Hunter, really tall; Kalen, really tall; Carter, really tall; and then there's Melina in the middle. <laughs> she's shorter than I am, I think, and has all these tall siblings. She must, you know, logically, would have said, "Oh, you got your height from your mom." Well, not really, it's the same kind of thing. We can put all of those genes in together because there's lots of them. And however many Melina got was how many she got. And it's a sliding scale. All the other kids got a lot. And there's nothing to predict that. We can't put that in a Punnett square and figure it out because they're polygenic. Lots of genes, one trait. And then if we flip the script, Jason, we're not done yet, so hopefully you didn't pack up. Pleutrophy is going to be the exact opposite. One gene influences lots of characteristics. One gene influences lots of characteristics. So one of these is called frizzle feather chickens. The gene says to curl, the feathers curl up instead of laying flat. You can breed for this, like people pay lots of money for frizzle feather chickens. But they also have a high metabolism, high blood pressure, all these other things that are, are wrong with them because of one gene influencing many characteristics. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.